As a child, I grew up with a mother who was a housewife. I didn't go to preschool, and since my father worked away from home and my sisters were in school all day, I got to hang around with my mother. Our home was divided into two spheres. My mother's sphere, upstairs, where the kitchen, the living room and the bedrooms were. And my father's sphere in the basement, where the home office, the TV room and the garage were. I followed my mother's work in the household with great interest, but also with respect. All day long, she handled very advanced and heavy machines that made terrible sounds. They shook, they rotated, they crashed, mashed, pressed, cut, chopped, mangled, heated. I remember sitting with my nose pressed against the window of the washing machine, fascinated by the strong centrifugal force. I followed my mother's hands as she fed the fabric in the sewing machine, just millimeters from the sharp and hacking needle. And it was not without a certain fear that I observed the fruits being rootlessly mashed into juice by the rotary blade of the blender. For me, my mother was an expert on technical machines. Yet she tended to talk about herself as technically incompetent. My father, on the other hand, who took out the drill from time to time, he was the one that was technically competent, according to her. So how come my mother had this idea of herself? According to the dictionary, technology is the summary term of all humans' methods to satisfy their desires by using physical objects. This means that technology is everything from sewing to tinkering with the car. Yet we tend to think of traditional male technology as the real technology and technological competence as something that is valued on the basis of how well one handled this. We can see this, for example, in how technical inventions by women have been downgraded and erased from the history of technology. Well, except from those that have been incorrectly credited to men, of course. I bet many of you didn't know that computer programming was pioneered by a woman, Ada Lovelace. Or that central heating is based on the work by another woman, Alice H. Parker. Or that the wireless technology that powers your phone is based on discoveries by yet another woman, Hedy Lamarr. But we can also see this in how male-dominated professions like engineering are regarded as technical, while female-dominated professions like textile work are not. In how technical artifacts that from the beginning were used by men, like the sewing machine and the telephone, have lost their technological status when being taken over by women. And we can see that this in how machines in the household primarily used by men, are being called power tools, while machines in the household primarily used by women are being called assistants. In the 90s, the techno-feminist schoolers Cynthia Cockburn and Susan Ormond studied how uh, engineers defined and valued technology, depending on if it was associated to a female activity or a male activity. And they found that traditional female technology was defined as dull and simple, while traditional male technology was defined as challenging and complex. In addition, traditional female technology was categorized as low-tech, meaning unmechanical and outdated, while traditional male technology was categorized as high-tech, meaning highly mechanical and modern. This view upon uh, technology and design, these values was something that I noticed that was not only confirmed through our work, but also reproduced. I noticed this during the education in how, in the selection of the companies we worked with, in how the assignments were formulated, how the result was evaluated, and in everyday talk. I also learned that the same superior thinking went hand-in-hand hand with the design. 
the more masculine expression, the greater the chances of reading a product as exclusive, credible and professional. The more feminine expression, the greater the chances of reading a product as simple and user-friendly. And these two mixers here, they uh, illustrate this quite well. The chrome-colored and black one to the right has a powerful motor, several features like vacuum, pulse and ice crushing function, several power settings and a container made of unbreakable triton plastic. The one to the left, the hourglass shaped and the white one, has a less powerful motor, fewer features, only one power setting and a container made of plain plastic. This view on technology and design was something that I would question. I was thinking, if all exclusive and powerful products are dressed in male costumes, and less exclusive and less powerful products are dressed in female costumes, how does that affect our view on gender? And by extension, how does that affect our view on women and men? When it was time for me to do my master thesis, I decided that I wanted to discuss the design of two gender-coded hand machines that are quite common in Swedish households. A drill and a hand blender. And to discuss this, I made an exchange. This is the hand blender Mega Hurricane Mixer to the left, and the drill Dolphia to the right. When I designed the drill, I thought of it as a hand blender. And when I designed the hand blender, I thought of it as a drill. The overall shape of the hand blender is inspired by an eagle, an animal that symbolizes precision and speed. It's larger than needed for the hardware inside to give the feeling of a robust and powerful product. I also wanted exaggerated and complex surfaces to enhance the impression of performance and strength. To build this up, I used mixed materials with the matte finish and dark colors. The message here is that this is a product that can stand rough handling. I designed a hand grip similar to the grip of a gun to promote a sense of respect. For the same reason, even the power switch is designed like a trigger. The trigger is also orange and color that is associated to danger. At the top of the hand blender, I placed a display showing the power settings in luminous figures, at the same time giving direct feedback of the user's manual power. And finally, the rotary blade is fastened in a grip like a drill chuck decorated with digital characters. I wanted to give the idea here that the rotary blade can be changed depending on purpose to give a sense of flexibility, but also creativity. The overall shape of the drill is inspired by the anatomy of a dolphin, an animal that is often considered to be cute and kind. I chose this unitary design because I didn't want the overall shape of the drill to reveal that it contains the machinery. The colors are white and light blue with a glossy surface to urge caution and care in handling. The ventilation holes are just as many as needed to cool the machinery. And I also place them a bit uh, with some distance away from the motor to minimize the impression of performance. For the same reason, even the power switch is integrated into the handle and concealed by a decorative rubber panel. It operates in such a way that you squeeze it. There is no need for much manual power to get it started. The chuck is easy to manage by hand without any tools, and clear symbols help the user to determine which power settings should be used depending on purpose. But the choices are limited to three drill bits of different sizes to give the impression of a simple and user-friendly product. These two prototypes have been exhibited in many different contexts. And the most common comment has been that I have designed a drill for women, or a women's drill. When asking why people perceived it as female, 
The answer has been that it looks weak, unreliable, childish, and as a kitchen tool. Of course, it must be a drill for women. The hand blender, on the other hand, it has remained genderless. It has only been described as tough, professional, cool, and so on. And what happens here, it's the same as when we speak of football versus ladies' football, actors versus female actors, and chips versus chips for women, that the male is the norm and the female deviates from the norm. Women are women due to the fact that they are not men. Looking at the words feminine and masculine in a dictionary, this valuation becomes clear. The word feminine is defined from the word unmanly, but the word masculine is not defined from the word unwomanly. So, when a drill, an artifact that is associated with a traditional male activity, is dressed in a female costume and becomes unmanly, it must become a drill for women. Technology is the summary term of all human methods to satisfy their desires by using physical objects. Next time you see a powerful drill, maybe you will see through the aggressive racing stripes, the chrome color details, and the fake ventilation holes, and realize that it's superficial decoration. Just like the smooth surface, the rounded shapes, and the glossy pastel colors. It doesn't really say anything about how satisfying the drill is for you. That's something that you can only discover by actually using it. And that is something that is decided more by individual needs than it is by gender. By exchanging the styles of the drill and the hand blender, my aim was to raise awareness about how te design and technology can reproduce ideas about gender. But it's important to understand that this is just a symptom of a much deeper problem. Although 14 years have passed since this project was conducted, still today I get questions from companies, schools, organizations about permission to use my work as an example when they are going to talk about equality. It shows so clearly what it's all about, they say. In 14 years, Little have changed when it comes to how society seems to assign a lower value to many things connected to women. And this is the real issue we need to address. Awareness alone is not the solution. Design alone is not the solution. But it has the potential to make visible what we do not see. And through that, to open for alternative narratives about how the world looks and functions. The story of my mother as being technically incompetent was, of course, not the true one. The true story was that she was highly technically competent. And that is just one of the many stories about women, women's work, and women's lives that need to be rewritten. Thank you. <laughs>